You didn't think I was done with the challenges, did you? I may have a rocky upload schedule, but I'm always up to do a birthday challenge. Hey guys, I'm Young Sliver, and today we're going to see if I can beat Pokemon Black with an Escavalier. It's a bug steel type Pokemon that evolves from Carablast, only if you trade it from a Shellman. But I can't really do that trade. So I'm just going to start with Escavalier. Let's get the obligatories out of the way real quick. As I said, we're working with Bug and Steel, so our best stats are going to be our physical attack and our special defense. I always thought a Scavalier would be fast, but it turns out he's actually really slow. I was probably just thinking about Excelgore, but that'll be a different challenge if you guys ask me to. Things could get really dangerous for us due to our low speed and double weakness to fire. Looks like I've got my work cut out for me today. Time for the rules. You know them, you love them. Probably. Anyways, rule number one, I can only use a Scavalier in battle. I'll need HM Pokemon, but they won't see any combat. Rule number two, I can't use any exploits, not that I know any. And rule number three, I can't use any items in battle. Held items are fine, and I can use Pokeballs to catch HM Pokemon, but other than that, no items could really be used while I'm in combat. Before we get started, have you subscribed? It's completely free, and I'm not going to stop making content anytime soon, so I think it's a fair trade. Don't forget to like the video if you like it, and leave a comment. Are you ready? I used the randomizer to swap out Snivy for a Scavalier for Max Challenge. I named her Sophie after a character in a Common Rider season that I haven't watched yet. It's a kick-ass season though, I'll have to watch it sometime. Anywho, Sophie has Swarm, so our bug moves will be stronger when our health is low. She also has a careful nature, so more special defense. At least her attack isn't lowered. We beat our rivals in N, so it's onto the first gym. We'll be fighting Chili. Yikes. I didn't record the Pokemon School fight with Charon, but he was pretty rough since he's got a Tepig with Ember. Chili's got a Panseer with Incinerate, and I'm not tough enough to beat him at level 13. I come back, level up off his Lollipop, and out comes his Panseer. I leer him as he uses Workup, hit him, poison him with Twin Needle. After he gets greedy with another Workup, he hits hard with Incinerate, and I finish him off. God, that was a nightmare. Now that that's over, we can use Cut. Unfortunately, I can't pass the daycare with only Sylphie. I picked up the Panpour from the Dream Yard, but I have to break a little rule in order to continue with the challenge. I box Panpour again once I finish this fight. Charon, the walking nerd emoji, stops me, so I drop his starter's defense and one-tap it before I do the same with his purloin. I don't like Charon. We stop a pet theft and it's onto the next gym, the normal gym. But first, N challenges us. He's not difficult to fight in most of the games, so I may not bring him up much. Gym time! Herdier is fairly easy, but Watchog makes me terrified. She puts us to sleep, and we don't wake up until it's almost too late, but we're able to twin needle her down. Before I can celebrate, though, a bunch of plasma mooks steal a Dragonite skull. Why? Because they're PETA. Logic and being good people don't really gel with them. Anyway, we get the skull back, and it's onto the Castalia Gym, where I forgot to heal. That's not really an issue, though. Burger Time's first two Pokémon go down pretty easy, and his Levani is a two-tap. Delightfully simple, all things considered. I beat Bianca with no issue, but I get demolished by Charon. He's got a Fire Starter with a really solid fire move. I'll have to grind. Even then, I still take so much damage off Pignite's Flame Charge that I'd be shredded if I got past him. I'll probably just wait till I'm level 32 and see if I can cut him down with Slash. Level 32 and a scope lens from the battle building from Castalia later, and Sharon's entire team is a one-tap sweep. The thing is though, if Pignite wasn't a one-tap, he would two-shot me, no doubt about it. On to Nimbasa. Alessa isn't too difficult, but her Zev Strika hits really, really hard. Her last Amalga almost takes us out, but she gets greedy with Hyper Potions and ended up just critting her for a one-shot. Let's go! We get access to Driftville, and take on the Plasmas in the Frozen Storage. Now that they're taken into custody, let's take on the Ground Gym. Clay did no damage to us until he threw in his Ace in the Hole, Excadrill. He gets us down to about half health, but we're a force to be reckoned with now. Clay can't stop us, but he sure as hell can let us into the Charge Stone Cave now. N isn't too bad, we were never really in any danger. Uh, but we're definitely gonna need a little trip to the Pokemon Center afterwards. We've definitely earned it, because we got shredded. Afterwards, we visit Skyla on Celestial Tower. Alrighty, now it's time to fight her. 
I one-tap her Swoobat, leave her unpheasant with just a midge of health. She heals only to get one-tapped, and Swana is just a straight-up two-tap. Neat. Before I leave Mistleton, I pick up the TM for Aerial Ace. I'm gonna need it immediately. Stupid Charon goes to fight me at the base of Twist Mountain, and I've completely forgotten that my moves, well, moved when I deleted Cut and learned Aerial Ace. I misclick instead of one-tapping his bird, making it a long-winded two-tap because Charon wants to waste my time. I go for Aerial Ace on his Pig Knight, and for whatever reason, he uses Takedown instead of, you know, a fire move? Porky got tapped. Lipard fakes me out, but I come back next turn and one-tap him with X-Scissor. Last is Civi Sage, but he's a free one-tap. Before we get to the next town, and no, I won't be going over Twist Mountain because it's boring, I go back to Driftvale to pick up Poison Jab from the city's west route. I probably won't need it, but I'd rather not need it than not have it. Icarus City, is that how it's pronounced? Don't care, I can't even spell it. Anyway, it's Ice Gym time. Vanillite is a one-tap with Iron Head, Veritic is a one-tap with Iron Head, and Cryagonal, wait for it, is a one-tap with Iron Head. Insultingly easy. But wait, it seems the Shadow Ninjas want to kidnap me for plot reasons. What a conundrum! And N got himself a big funny dragon. What wacky hijinks! N tells us to get the other dragon for a fair fight, so we head off down to the Relic Castle. Getsus tells us that we wasted our time getting to the bottom of Relic Castle. Great! So I go and pick up the Lightstone from where I know it is, and head to Opelucid. Less for story and more so I can get this challenge done already. Getsus stops me to Lord Dump and just admit his entire plan to me like the idiot villain he is. And then when we arrive in Lopelucid, Getsus is giving the Pokemon equivalent of a Trump speech. Yikes. Anyway, Dragon Gym time. Fracture is a one-tap, Dredigan never hits me, and we eventually take him out, but his rough skin absolutely shreds us. Blast is Haxorus, but he's a beautiful one-tap. All eight badges are mine! Now what you're about to see is my successful fight against Charon, because he was an absolute nightmare in this part. This took several tries, but Unpheasant hit me with Air Slash, I didn't flinch this time, one tapped him, got a very close two hit on Embor, Lipard gives me a freebie, and Sima Sage gives me unbelievably low before I one tap him. Holy shit, I hate Charon. With that asshole beaten, we can finally get through Victory Road. On my way, I found this shiny Woobat, holy shit! I can't use it, but I'll take it. Now we're in the end game. I box all the other Pokemon, including our shiny Woobat, and prepare for the final hurdle. I take on Marshall first. Throw is a two hit, I go back and forth with Sock until I win, Conkledur is a two hit, and Mean Shao misses a jump kick, giving us the win. Next up is Caitlyn. Reuniclus was a one tap, Gothitelle was a one tap, Sigalith was a one tap, and Musharna was a one tap. She didn't even stand a chance. I heal up and move on. Grimsley is our number three. Scrafty Sand attacks us, so we go back and forth till he runs out of full restores. Next is Crocodile, and he's a one tap. His life heart is next, and it does some scary damage, but we one tap it. Finally, Bisharp comes out and hurts us bad, but we pull through and tap him for the win. Not too bad. Let's go for Chantal. Believe it or not, Chantal was actually next to impossible for the longest time, simply because her second Pokemon is a Chandelier that not only outspeeds me, but hits a fire blast that I cannot take. I ended up having to get to level 87 just to get past the chandelure and then finish off the entire team. That entire fight was a nightmare, I don't want to go over it again. I literally spent days on that. Not even kidding, I'm going off script right now because it was actually that stressful, I wanted to die. Next the ground erupts to the massive castle and I have to catch Reshram. He's required for the fight, but he doesn't get to fight. This is the only time I'll use items in battle, because I don't have any other option unless Reshram is down. Time to fight N. Zekrom goes down without too much trouble, Kling Kling does massive damage, but reveals itself to be Zorark after getting one-tapped. Karakosta goes down without much trouble, Archeops is a one-tap, the real Kling Kling is a two-hit, and Vanillux is a one-tap. Finally, we fight Getsis, the real villain. First I get Reshram out of the way, then one tap is Cofagragus. Hydreigon does massive damage but gets one tapped. Electrox is annoying but we still take him out. Next is Buffalant but he's a one tap. Seismitoad is also a one tapped with the hidden power I kept by accident. And finally I two tap his Bisharp for the win, 
finally beating the challenge. For the most part, I'd say this challenge was an absolute blast, though there were a few times that were an absolute nightmare just because of my double weakness to fire and unbelievable slowness, something that I predicted right at the start. I highly recommend trying out this challenge for yourself if you'd like to. It's quite fun. I guarantee there's lower levels you could beat it at. I just wanted to rush this out for my birthday. Uh, but yeah, that's all I had to say. I hope you really like this challenge, and I've got plenty more further down the road. Uh, but until then, I've been Young Sliver, you're all loved, and I'll see you next time.